Hi and welcome. My name is Konstantin Magnus and in this Cinema 4D tutorial we are going to combine an object that contains of um, circular shapes and straight shapes. <clears throat> so when you have a disc on the ground, uh, the most important thing is to keep it lightweight so it should only contain as many edges as we really need. Um, I've chosen 24 in this case and I want to use those four edges here. So you can pick them by going to edge mode and going to um, path selection. Uh, here you can find all the shortcuts. So U is mostly how it starts and then in this case it will be just UM. I do not click here, I just show it to you. U gives the sheet. And if you don't move your mouse now and just press M, you get it right away. And the cool thing about the path selection is you can be quite far away and it still selects exactly the outer part. Now, <clears throat> instead of extruding, I just pull the edges and hold down Control. And while I move this, I also press Shift now to get exactly 10 centimeters distance. So I will keep this curved, but the next extrusion, I put it away, let's say 30 centimeters, I will straighten. So I just grab the right um, value. This says size XYZ, and I can look here that I work along the Z axis. And when I put this to zero, I just get this. Now in relation to the world coordinate system, which is the center uh, system here, I just enter 130 to make this correct. Um, now of course this object gets a thickness, but it will only get that later on. So I just pull this up, hold down control, and now make sure I hold down shift to extrude this 200 centimeters to the top. Now a part of this is what I want to copy. So I can just select those polygons. And by the way, just a neat trick. Um, let's go back. If you have something like this already selected, uh, those edges, you can hold down shift and click on polygons to get the other, um, the connected polygons. So what I want to duplicate is just this angle and next we can right click and say mirror. Of course also these modeling um, tools have shortcuts and they all start with M and H is a symmetrical letter so maybe this is how you can keep in mind how the mirror command is called quickly. Now in order to mirror a geometry you first have to pick a coordinate system and I like to um, choose world because I always know how this is aligned and I can look up when I need a horizontal reflection I just take Z and X because they are lying flat so X Z is the correct way to do it and instead of hitting apply now I just go to the viewport and click on the top edge here so that way I get a copy. Now here on top I want to create a straight element so I go back to um, edges and as you can see I also have shortcuts for these um, they are not they are by standard um, but I find them really useful so I have on my keyboard 4, 5 and 6. Um, I just pick 5 here you may have to click here and just stroke over it this with the path selection again and we will set this straight. Now how do you get those shortcuts? You just go to window and there's a thing called customization on top and you can customize commands. So that way you can just type in what you need, for example point, look for the same button and it says use point mode and then you just enter the number you need here so it would be 4 and then you say assign and it will kind of 
warn you and say, hey, this is double. But in most cases, I just click OK and um, work on. So you would just hover over this and see the name of the command. You can read it down here. And it really makes sense. You just have to do this once. OK, let's go on. Like my next, next task will be to um, connect another sphere. So let's just view this from top. And I just move this inwards so I can see stuff better. And I also make sure to get the same view, grow shading lines. Now we can already look up how big this is. And the size is 100 centimeters. So what I can do next is I create another disk. And this time I choose a radius of 50, so the outer edges fit right away with the width. Um, also, I need to display the wireframe so I get all the details, and now we have to reduce this. So let's just pick 16 edges, and also um, let's say 30 in radius, and I will shrink the outer radius to 40 so I can do some uh, extra ring later on. And I've chosen 16 rotation segments because I want this ring to remain stable even if I delete the top half of it. So I have enough edges here to really define a perfectly round shape. Also, when working in 2D mode, there's a danger of forgetting about its uh, 3D position, so I put this up 400 centimeters to make it fit, and I can move this back maybe like here. So now, as I have this disk, I would like to um, yeah, first select it and convert it. So now all its edges are available to me, and um, I again press UM to get the outer edges here and press D for extruding and I say I want 10 centimeters offset. So now the idea behind this is that the outer point sits right in line with this edge. I can copy these coordinates or we could also just choose this ring and set it. Now that's way too. Let's just keep it the way it is and choose this points coordinate, 50 something, and I will put it on these two points as well. So position gets pasted the same value, and I hit zero. I enter the same, but I put a minus in front of it before I paste it, give it a size of zero, and hit enter. So that way it is straight. And now I want to connect both objects. So this is the big one, and this is the ring. Um, we just connect it with connect objects and delete. Now as it is one object, I tend to first make this part here straight. So let's just choose this edge and move it along by a certain amount. Set it straight again. And now you see that we have a bit of a problem due to the fact that we used 16 edges along this circle, we have only four edges on the opposing side. So what we can do for sure is right-click bridge or just press B for bridge and connect these outer tracks. I think this makes sense right away. And now the problem is we have four edges on the left side and only two on the right side. So what we do is we just take these two and pull them outwards by pressing Ctrl. And now we bridge in a bit different manner. So we go like this and we just put this outwards. So this is no problem because it's lying in a flat area. And the next step would be to just Press UM again and choose the bottom and the top corner here. And I right click and press bevel to get some roundness in here. Now make sure it doesn't collide 
down here it's already happening so we should reduce the offset to in this case something like 18 or maybe 16 so just this has enough space and I don't want to set it to solid now because I really want it to be round and I should give it plenty of subdivisions and 3 makes sense because we want one cut in the middle this one and one neighbor on each side this makes um, sense it's not too much it's just enough to define it and then I want to give it some more edges here because stretching is never good I can um, show it to you uh, what happens without adding extra cuts when we put this into a subdivision and we go to display isoparms you will see that this edge is jumping quite a lot and this shouldn't happen so what we do instead is we right click and say edge cut really make sure to disable create n-gons otherwise you will just see some points and then we can cut it through and I give it enough cuts so that it looks more or less quadratic a quadratic shape has lots of dis uh, excuse me lots of advantages um, yeah I think we can keep it that way um, it shades better it's easier to deform and it just looks cleaner overall okay so this would be the base shape and next we could just click here take all the polygons right click and extrude now you extrude them outwards because inwards it's getting really tight let me just show you on purpose what it does here stuff gets way too close so we choose a value that's minus so it's pointing outwards and this is way more relaxed now you see this shape is open so hit create caps to close it and because the all the polygons if I press command A now are blue I just have to right click and say reverse normals also always make sure when there's a tool activated you don't need any more just click on the black arrow so everything is safe again now when we press Q to activate the subdivision you see that this shape looks okay but it's quite roundish and the last step will be just to go to edges and go to select loop selection UL is the shortcut and carefully select those outer edges make sure you don't run inside here but rather move your mouse and if you're too far away like me it makes sense to zoom in a little and just choose this hold down shift to get an additional selection here um, the inner rings is what we need and also the top rings up here and down there so I have all edges selected and now we zoom to the most problematic area which will be this one always the corners always go to tight spaces and uh, then we would right click bevel drag this in and set this to solid now you can see that this has a little problem with all those triangles so we set this to mitering uniform and that way <clears throat> everything looks um, good again we don't get too much detail and also this distance will bring us I set it to one a very very sharp edge just make sure this is complete and doesn't collide anywhere and now if you activate subdiff again you will get a beautiful lamp holder